Hey folks, Pastor Matt here. Uh, so you might not recognize this backdrop. That's because I'm not at my house. My Wi-Fi is down at my house. I'm not making this up. Got a pandemic, doing everything from home, and then the Wi-Fi goes down. So uh, I'm at my parents' house in their basement. There's probably a joke in there somewhere. Some of you know my parents live just down the street from me, but uh, they uh, they moved here recently. But uh, so anyway. I uh, just decided we're going to go ahead and uh, do this thing live, the Sunday sermon preview, uh, with uh, with no notes, no prep. We're just uh, we're we're going off the fly here. When I say no prep, I'm joking. I uh, wrote my sermon notes out uh, the day before, so uh, now I'm going to try to summarize it all very quickly. First couple reminders coming up for Sunday. Okay, uh, one again Sunday, uh, Facebook, our Forest Gate Facebook page, 10 a.m. That's how you can find the live stream for the service. You can also go to the Forest Gate website. It'll redirect you where you need to go. There's a link on there. Uh, so there's that. <clears throat> uh, two, the pastor panel Q&A thing that we did last week on Zoom. One, had a lot of fun with that. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Um, first, an apology. We messed up the link. Uh, don't know how it happened. I didn't even know it happened until Monday night, uh, a good 24 hours after the Q&A was over. So. Um, we understand some of you wanted to get on and you weren't because we messed up something with the link. We'll do better on that. We're sorry. Also, we're not going to do it this week. The next one is going to be May 10th, again, 15 minutes after worship. So, uh, But for Sunday, May 3rd, we're going to look together at Luke 16, verses 14 through 18. I'm going to read those, then I'm going to talk about them a little bit. The Pharisees, who were lovers of money, heard all these things, and they ridiculed him. And he said to them, you are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were until John. Since then, the good news of the kingdom of God is preached, and everyone forces his way into it. But it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one dot of the law to become void. Everyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery, and he who marries a woman divorced from her husband commits adultery. Now, you might hear all that and say, hmm, those are like three, four, five disconnected thoughts, just random verses thrown into Luke, right? That's kind of what I thought the first time I read it. I was like, whoa, wait a minute, how are these connected? However, I think there's a very logical connection, not just in those five verses that we read, but a connection to what comes before as well. The first clue of that is in verse 14. Pharisees who were lovers of money heard all these things. What's the, these things? What are we talking about there? Well, he's talking about the story that came right before. It's Luke 16, 1 through 13, the parable of the dishonest manager, the unjust steward, and different names are used. He talks, amongst other things, about how, in verse 13, no servant can serve two masters. The end of the verse, you cannot serve God and money. Pharisees love money. They thought, why not? Why can't I serve God in money? Why can't I have my cake and eat it too? And so rather than simply say, hey, Jesus, we think you're wrong, because then they would look like they were greedy and money grubbers, they simply make fun of him. And notice what Jesus does. He doesn't say, ah, you're greedy. That's why you're doing this. Jesus gets to the heart of the bigger problem. The bigger problem was they wanted to look good in front of other people, which is why they wanted so much money. So that everybody would say, oh, they got money. You must, be, you must be righteous. God must approve of what you do. So, Jesus says, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. What is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Jesus knew that at the end of the day, the Pharisees were all about looking for loopholes of the law so that they could look righteous, even though they weren't, even though they did whatever they pleased most of the time. Okay, so that's the first thing. The kingdom of God is not about loopholes or looking good. And then the second thing, so, so he tells them, ah, you're, you're trying to justify yourselves before men. You're trying to look good in front of others. Meanwhile, transition, verse 16, the law and the prophets were until John. Since then, the good news of the kingdom of God is preached, and everyone forces his way into it. Now, if you look at Matthew eleven twelve, 12, there's a very similar phrase there, a uh, similar story that Matthew tells and the way he words it, um, or at least the way maybe English translations word it, because uh, the same Greek word appears in both of them, is he talks about how uh, violent men, here I have it bookmarked, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. 
From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. Okay, there's, there's violence, there's force, there's pressing into it. Uh, some translations say forcing into the kingdom of God. What is going on there? Well, Jesus is looking at these Pharisees who sit around and try to intellectualize their, their way out of their sin and convince themselves and others, and maybe they thought they could even convince God, that they were really righteous and really following the law. And Jesus is saying, no, number one, the law and the prophets were until John. The Old Testament was until John. John the Baptist comes, everything changes, and since then, the kingdom of God is preached, proclaimed, uh, galizo, the verb for evangelize, uh, proclaim good news. And the people who really understand the good news, the good news that Jesus has kept the law in our place, we don't have to look good in front of others, we don't have to keep the law, which is impossible. The people who really understand that good news, they force their way into it. They're like the guy in, his, I think it's Luke 5, who his friends tear open the roof of somebody else's house so they can get to Jesus. It's the friends of the paralyzed man who do that. The people who really understand the good news act as if there is nothing in the world more important than this. They will tear the door down to get to Jesus, to get into the kingdom of God. Now, of course, it's not a matter of us trying hard enough. That's not really what's going on. We love because God first loved us. 1 John 4, I believe it's verse 19. Um, but when you are forcing your way in, as it were, like those, like those guys that tore the roof open to get to Jesus, when you're doing that, it's a sign that you get it, that you get the good news, that it's not about your effort. And it makes you want to pursue it all and obey him even more. So I think that's the connection between those verses. Uh, the kingdom of God in some ways is about violence and about force, but not quite in the way that might sound at first. It's a sign that you earnestly desire it if uh, you're pressing into the kingdom of God. And last but not least, remember these Pharisees who didn't want to obey the law? Contrast them with the people who got it, who said, I, I, I'll do anything in the world to get this. While they sit idly by and claim they keep the law, Jesus is reminding them that, hey, the law is still important. You know, looking for loopholes is not the way into the kingdom of God, but the law is still important. As a matter of fact, the law has not passed away, he says in verse 17. And then there's this verse about divorce. What, what in the world is going on there? Why is he transitioned like that? The laws about divorce were one of the laws that the Pharisees tried to wiggle out of the most. Um, I forget his name, but there's a rabbi that uh, supposedly wrote that it was acceptable to divorce your wife if she served her husband a dinner that was slightly burned. I'm not even sure that stands up in court today, but, uh, you know, it's just an example of how frivolous they were. They would come up with any reason they could to say, no, it's okay to get out of God's unchanging, eternal, abiding law. And Jesus is saying, no, 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 the law still stands. And the one law he mentions as an example, again, is the one that the Pharisees had the most trouble keeping. So how would they have felt? How should we feel as we look at that? We live in a day and age when people try to come up with all kinds of unbiblical justifications for divorce. Um, we say two things. One, divorce is never God's design for marriage. And two, there are permissible reasons uh, for divorce. Um, uh, adultery, uh, the part of the other spouse, um, and abandonment. But even then, uh, those are permissible conditions, not, not God's design. God's hope is that we would uh, love our wives as Christ loved the church, that marriage would be a picture of the gospel. Um, but sadly, most of us fall short. Even if we don't try to divorce our wives because of some silly reason like the example I gave, like the ones that were examples of things people did in the first century. We still have trouble keeping that law. We still have trouble loving our wives like Christ loved the church because we are not perfect as Christ is. But hopefully, when we think about that, our imperfections, our shortcomings, it will simply drive us closer to Jesus, the one who kept the law in our place, 
the one who took the punishment for our sin, the one who gives us his righteousness to cover over all of our sin. So, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So, I think that's how those verses are connected. That's the short summary. I'll say a little bit more on Sunday. Hopefully by then I've got Wi-Fi that works at my house, and hopefully by then I have time to shave as well. So, you guys have a good weekend. We'll see you Sunday. Uh, one more time, Sunday, 10 a.m., about 15 minutes beforehand, we'll go live with a prelude and the announcement slides.